I'm Lynette Zhang, founder and CEO of Zhang Enterprises. And something that I've been talking about for a very long time with when the central banks and the Federal Reserve pushed interest rates down to zero and then kept it there for 15 years, the unintended consequences, well, quite honestly, I think we're about to face one. And it's called creditor on creditor danger. Because as the central banks forced individuals as well as corporations, as well as governments to go out on the risk spectrum and a reach for yield with interest rates held at zero. They created a bubble that I've spoken about over all these years that is really, it looks to me like it's popping and that could definitely create contagion throughout the entire global financial system. So what I'm talking about here is creditor on creditor and the cannibalization of those weak covenants, which means protections for the buyers of this debt. And so much of that risk has been transferred to you and you don't even know it. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So here, Barclays just came out with a report on creditor on creditor violence to continue. And their liability management report depicts a normalization of this cannibalization where one creditor is taking advantage of another. And even though you're gonna sit here and say, well, how does that impact me? Wait, I'm gonna show you. You cannot ignore this. You ignore this at your own peril. So let's just move on because this is about creditors protecting themselves at your expense. And by the way, Give us a thumbs up right now as you're going into this so you don't forget it because it really helps spread this word. And this is a hidden, this is one of the things that are underneath the water of that iceberg that you can't see until it's too late, but you need to see it because the battle has already begun. And I think frankly, you, could very well be, actually all of us, we're all gonna be the collateral damage of this. First of all, as a little reminder, as those interest rates were held at zero and you have insurance companies and other companies and individuals reaching for that yield, the legal protections offered by co loan covenants has consistently been below what Moody's regards as the weakest level. In other words, you have no protections. So I want to show you where that is and how that's been dropping. And remember, they put down ZERP, zero interest rate policy, basically 2008, 2009, and it took a while for the interest rates on uh, for these covenants, for these protections, for the investors to really fall below. That happened in the beginning of 2014, and it's been worse and worse ever since as the level of issuance to these covenant light loans have exploded. The 15 year reach for yield is what created all of these vulnerabilities. So when these central banks sit there and tell you, well, who could have seen this coming? A blind monkey could have seen this coming. Sure, you're gonna force people out on the risk spectrum and you've now pumped all this flipping free money into the corporate sector you think they're gonna take advantage of it? No, they have your best interests at heart. Oh really? Cause no, they do not. And let me show you where this really has an impact on you. Because people think, well, well that's credit on credit. How does that impact me? Well, this is from the Federal Reserve's financial stability report, the most recent one. And the vulnerabilities that they're talking about are losses on fixed rate debt for banks. Okay, so remember, interest rates go up, market value of all that debt, whether it's a direct bond or it's a mortgage or it's an auto loan or it's any kind of debt instrument is way underwater. It still is. Is the central bank gonna lower those rates fast enough to make a difference? We're about to find that out, aren't we? 
Now, interestingly enough, when you look at the percentage of the loans held in the banks, the fixed rate debt, that has actually gone down over this period of time, how much they're doing it currently. Yeah, they backed off. Of course they would, they saw the danger. But this is where you're vulnerable because this garbage is held in mutual funds, insurance companies, life insurance companies, property and casualty insurance companies, hedge funds, as well as broker dealers. Do you think that an explosion in this area could travel throughout the entire global financial system? But also, do you have any wealth that you're holding in any one of those kinds of companies? Because much as you think there is a guarantee, look at your contract. It is based upon the claims paying ability of the company. And what have we been seeing in the insurance world? Insurance companies are pulling out and canceling you for any little infraction because their job is not really to protect you. Their job is to make money. So when it starts to cost them too much, guess what? Your guarantees go out the window. That's called counterparty risk. You know what doesn't show any counterparty risk? Physical gold held in your possession. And actually I'm taking it a step further and I'm going to say collectible gold coins that are still their physical gold, but in a completely different category. And what does the bank for international settlements say? Gold is the physical gold held in your possession is the only financial asset, the only financial asset that runs no counterparty risk. What I'm showing you here is all counterparty risk. In all of these other areas that are facing you, right? The risk has grown. The percentage that they have invested in this kind of garbage, the leverage that they have created will easily overwhelm their ability to pay you out. And especially with what I'm about to show you, just wait till you see this. And, and we saw it coming. We've been talking, I've been talking about this for years. And in addition, all of that garbage that they've created has been turned into securities to the tune of in excess $13 trillion. And what we don't see and what they don't report on are all of those derivatives, those additional leverage pieces. And what's leverage? It's debt upon debt upon debt upon debt with this teeny weeny weeny itty bitty part of equity. And that's why when these deals go south, they have an impact on everybody. Claims paying ability. Yeah, I think that's done. And I'm hoping that you can now see how you are vulnerable to this. If you hold any wealth in banks and credit unions, mutual funds, insurance companies, life insurance companies, property and casualty insurance companies, hedge funds, or broker dealers, you are vulnerable. Your wealth is vulnerable. And if they say no, who are you going to complain to? You signed that contract. So what we're looking at is the crisis of covenant light loans. Lenders aim to enhance their claims on an issuer's asset at the expense of other lenders. And actually what I'm talking about is all of these past lenders that have loaned to these corporations with covenant light. In other words, no protection for investors. Now there is a new play that's coming in. That's what I'm talking about with cannibal cannibalization. Lenders aim to enhance, new lenders aim to enhance their claims on an issuer's assets at the expense of the past lenders. So you lend the money, you think you're safe. Oh yeah, no. 90% of those loans lack proper maintenance covenants. That means there's nothing they can do. But by exploiting the lack of investor protections, money managers can offer rescue financing to sickly businesses that pushes other creditors down the repayment check or shifts the best parts 
of a company beyond their reach. This matters to you because of all of those securitizations, all of those previous loans turned into financial products and sold to you without your knowledge by all of those list of entities that I just showed you. So understand that, that you might say, but how in the world can they do that? I loan somebody money. How can they suddenly change? Well, let me show you how they do that. It's all in the contracts, right? Then who reads the contracts? Who writes the contracts? Not you or me. You trust that whoever you give your money to has your best interest at heart. They don't. They're making fees. They're transferring risk to you and you're paying for all of that. But now there are two common maneuvers, though others exist, but these are the most common. One is called a drop down, which means that companies transfer assets to subsidiary or other legal entities to shield them from existing creditors and use them as collateral for those new loans. So what that subsidiary really means is that a corporation will create a new corporation and then transfer the assets that back the original loans into that brand new corporation. Okay, did you wrap your brain around that? Let me back up and go over that one more time so that you're clear on that. In this methodology, that is perfectly legal because it was written into the contracts. Here you are, counterparty risk. This is counterparty risk that in a drop down maneuver, companies, existing companies take assets on which you gave them the loan to begin with, or all those entities gave them those loans to begin with. They create a new subsidiary and they transfer those income producing assets to this new entity, which now means all those old creditors, all those original creditors. What do you got in the company? You've got just garbage left in the company because any asset that had value has been transferred to a new company. And now they can use that to grow more wealth and push existing creditors down that spectrum. The other one is called up tiering. And that means that they are restructuring the debt to elevate the priority of the new lenders by sharing by share of outstanding debt, not hierarchy or who got in there first. And what that does is it harms all of those past lenders. Remember that big long laundry list? Everybody that invested in these companies with those covenant light loans, turned them into a product, sold them back to you without your understanding or your knowledge, have now lost any of the equity on which those first loans were issued. And that means that in a bankruptcy, guess who loses? those first entities, those first, so you, you lose. The new lenders now are lending against that equity. So that's twice. That's, that's hypothecation using the same equity to borrow. And that is rehypothecation using the same equity over again to take on new debt. Does this make sense to you? Can you even wrap your brain around what I'm trying to show you here? Because this is all beneath the surface. You aren't going to see it, but it's going to have an impact on you because of that whole big laundry list of, of entities that are participating in this on your behalf. So what are they doing? Oh, shocking. Restructuring becomes a pit stop to bankruptcy for risky borrowers. And I'm going to give you an example of one of them. You'll recognize this entity, but this is happening all over the place. But this liability management, in other words, transferring those assets and then borrowing more against those same assets 
can keep a firm afloat for longer. So it still makes them to you, to the investors, look like everything is okay on the surface. Underneath the surface, not so okay. And they're also saying there is evidence that these may not always lead to the best outcomes because the companies ultimately end up going bankrupt anyway. So then what do you get? You get a big fat Upkiss. because in the world that we live in, especially with all everything being online and a derivative of an asset, this is a real asset. This is a real asset. You become more vulnerable, prolong and postpone. That's what this is about. Kicking that can down the proverbial road and you can do it longer than people might think you can do it. And I'm showing you two of the ways that they're doing it, but all that does is increase the violence of the correction when it becomes too late. It makes a problem a much bigger problem. That's not in your best interest. And let me show you for a minute here on how much that has grown just in 2024. Notice the surge in general purpose debt. Huge, along with the unrestricted subsidiary investments. So this is showing you what I was just talking about and look at how much this has surged in 2024. I remember this kind of stuff only started happening after what, in 2014. This, this particular bar graph goes back to 2017. You can see how much that's grown over the years. Yeah, but how in the world could the Federal Reserve or the central banks know that this was happening? Yeah, they knew it was happening. Did they do anything to stop it? No. Why? Because it supports their efforts of creating a big enough crisis that will scare the crap out of you and enable them to shove the new system down your throat. If we come together and say no, just by holding real sound money outside of the system, guess what? this isn't gonna have the same level of impact on you as if you didn't do anything at all. That's why we have to come together in global community and local community to get through this together because there is nobody that's gonna be immune from this, nobody. Some will fare better, some will fare worse, and somebody will have the wealth to take advantage of this crisis and have this wealth transfer your way. Because the reality is, is this will not end well. None of the garbage that's going on, let alone this particular piece of it, it will not end well. It is most likely to force. That's why you're seeing Wall Street anticipate a hundred basis point cut between now and the end of the year. And we're already in September. That's not a very long time but they're going to be forced to do it to try and prolong this because I, I mean, I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm not sitting at the table, but I don't think that they are fully ready yet. I don't think they've gotten full enough, uh, uh, enough adoption yet. And by the way, I will be doing, I have done an update on what's going on with the new ZIG, the Zimbabwe gold back currency. We're going to be talking about that in another episode. I just want to stay here. And I want to give you an example of a company that you know, you and I know very well. How about, oh, Del Monte and Moody's downgrades food company Del Monte on liquidity troubles. Are you thinking that Del Monte, that huge corporation that's been around forever, that's been in everybody's households at one time or another? What? They have liquidity troubles? Well, yeah, they do. And there's even a negative outlook, which means that that Moody's grading services, and remember who pays the grading services, it's the corporations. So for them to be saying that not only are they crappy, but they expect it's gonna get worse, that means it must be really, really bad because they're, they're the ones that are paying Moody's to grade them. 
right? They're not doing it for free, but let's take a look at that because what is Del Monte's response to that? This was in July, July 10th, and this was August 7th. Del Monte Foods restructuring plan shuffles creditor hierarchy. There you go, my friends. So what are they saying here? Lenders providing 200, 200 uh, I'm sorry, yeah, 240 million in funding for canned food firm. Wow. Is that old lenders, that new lenders? Guess what? I'm going to get to that in a second because it's really, really interesting. And you just don't even realize what's happening, but that puts you in jeopardy. The deal is cut with the lender group and would create a completely new repayment order. And what happens if people don't, don't uh, cur current creditors don't agree to this restructuring? The bam, they're down at the bottom of the food chain. They're not getting their money back. Del Monte Foods is overhauling its debt in a restructuring plan that leaves creditors that don't participate at the bottom of the payout pecking order. So basically, you know this is a bad debt and you're gonna throw more money into it just out of the hopes that when they go bankrupt, you might get some of your money back. Seriously. Seriously, how do you feel about that? It's ridiculous. It's forcing them to throw in more money and creating even more leverage in the company. Now, how long will Del Monte have the ability to stay in business? A while longer, 240 million is gonna help them stay in business a little bit longer so that you are blind to what's really happening in that company. If you are sitting with fiat money debt in an insurance company, in a mutual fund company, in a bank, in a credit union, in a hedge fund, you are in deep doo-doo because Del Monte is not the only company that's doing it. There is a whole laundry list of companies that you don't even realize. But I wanted to show you also something because obviously this is the gold ETF flows. And gold, obviously, you guys know, I am a huge proponent on physical gold, not paper gold. All this is is a trust. And the reason why I went all the way back to when, 2007, is for you to see how in the past, when they wanted another mechanism to control the visible price, are these ETF flows in and out. But we talked about this recently, and I want to point it out to you again, because Wall Street would prefer you do paper. They do not want you to do this stuff. But this is the only thing that runs no counterparty risk. This ETF, you own shares in a trust. So yeah, it's, it's everything. And they make all the money. They have access to the physical metal. You don't. You just have something that is designed to, that's supposed to mimic the spot price, the manipulated spot price. But look at, look at what we see here. Decoupling between gold ETFs and spot. It's the first time we've really seen this. That is a very, very, very big deal. Because what it is showing you is that Wall Street is losing control of the physical market with gold. So are the central banks because a rise in gold price is an indication of a failing currency. And this system over and over and over again is showing all the signs of failure. And what happens? Well, people are trying to protect their wealth. And we've been taught that the only place really to do that is in the Wall Street machine. So here, little hens, go into the hen house, don't worry about the foxes that are sitting all around waiting to gobble you up. Yeah, well I say, get the heck out of the hen house. Get in to the physical metals, gold to protect your wealth, silver to make sure that you have a tool of barter. Get it done. Because even though this is gonna be postponed, there is not one person that I know of that can tell you the moment before 
And even if there was, even if somebody gets lucky, because that's what that is, for you to have the ability to get into position to weather the storm, you won't have it if you wait till one second before. You got to get prepared now. You got to click that link, make an appointment with one of our strategy specialists and get your own sound money strategy in place, as well as food, water, energy, security, that barterability piece, wealth preservation, community, which is what we're all about here, and shelter. These are all the things that we need. Get it done now. And local community has risen to the top because most people aren't in a position to provide their own food, water, energy, etc. But together, bring your skill sets. Be of value. Learn new skills. Volunteer. Go to a go to a go to a farmers market. Meet your local growers and give them a day's labor. You'll likely walk home with a lot of fresh food, but even more important, you've now created a relationship that could put you in the best circumstance to help survive because food becomes the biggest issue for most people. And we're seeing that. We're seeing that all around the world, including here in the U.S. Don't forget that if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Do not forget that because this is your sound money protection. They can do as much of this as they want, but there's a finite amount of this. There's a finite amount of this in anything that's physical. I don't care how much there is. There is a finite amount. Why? Why would you allow these central bankers and these corporations to eat up your wealth? What have they done for you lately? What have they done for you ever? Why would you support them? Why? Because anything that's created, that's made out of this stuff, the last time I checked, a trillion times zero is zero. Get it done. Get it done. We are getting warnings, warnings, warnings. Which one will you heed? Get it done. So if you want to show your support, please, again, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, and share, share, share. Just because you don't see it, ignorance does not make you immune. It just leaves you vulnerable. And I don't want any of you guys to be vulnerable. I want us all to come together in community because I know Without a doubt in my mind, one person can't do very much, but a whole community locally and globally, boy, we can have a positive impact on a lot of people. And until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.